Hello. How's right. it going? Hey. Hello. We're here once again on the floor of Eurogame Expo, and uh, we're here with Joe from Oculus Rift. Hey, and guys. He's showing off a few different games on Oculus Rift today. Can you just talk us through the titles that you've had on display? Yeah, earlier we had uh, Skydive. We're now switching over to show War Thunder, which is a World War II, uh, World War II flight sim. Yep. On the other side, we've got Surgeon Simulator, which is a little bit of a departure. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. You're getting, you're getting your hands dirty and working on a working on a now, living being. Okay, so yeah, that's the thing. Most of the experiences I've had so far in the world of Oculus Rift have all been cockpit based. So I've tried EVR as it was, Eat Valkyrie, Excellent. then I tried Strike Six Zero, Excellent. and now I've tried uh, War Thunder as well. So uh, obviously that's something that's I think particularly well suited for the Oculus yeah, Rift I mean, technology. Right now we're sitting down VR. We, uh, we're not at the holodeck yet. And so uh, if, if you're sitting down, then there's things that, of course, feel a little bit more natural sitting down, like flying a yeah. plane, driving a car. For instance, eye racing feels fantastic in, in VR. Uh, that said, that's, of course, not a limitation, and there's folks yeah. exploring, exploring way beyond that. Of course, first-person shooters is a natural uh, is a natural genre, but then... And uh, we just had a word with the guys from yeah. Omni as well, so yeah. that's obviously technology that's that they, they said they feel it's a very natural fit to go with Oculus Rift as well. That's something that they yeah. see as a, a great partnership, basically. I mean, yeah. uh, is that something where you will, do you think you'll see other technology develop to go with Oculus Rift as well? I, ideally, I mean, we try to be as open as possible. So the guys at Omni, they've taken our dev kit and they've done whatever they've done with it. And it's it's interesting and we want uh, we want to encourage that. The more, peop the more smart people we have looking at these problems around VR, the better. Yeah. And so whether that's omnidirectional treadmills or gesture tracking, uh, we know we're not going to be able to do this by ourselves. Yeah. And we're really focused on nailing the visual component. And the, the luxury of having an open SDK and a readily available dev kit is that you get folks that are interested in it and making it and, and really making it their own. Yeah. So yeah. And obviously one of the things that works against you slightly is being on a PC format as you are, that the default controls for PC aren't exactly well suited to Oculus Rift. Exactly, and so control scheme is a, is a completely different, uh, it's, it's got its own challenges. Yeah. And here at the at the show, we generally have a, a game controller. We hand people uh, and they, they, they get it. Yeah. It's, it's already a step for them to try to put on the Rift and, and take in this new environment. Yeah. We, 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 we want to flatten that learning curve out as much as possible, so we, we give them a familiar controller and then they go to town. Uh, that said, that's not a VR controller, and so there's yeah. uh, there's there's all sorts of exploration to still be done about mm -hmm. controllers. But again, visual now, component first. One thing that I'd like to see, obviously, <laughs> yep. is something where the controller appears somehow in the game. So, like, if, even if you're, it's like just the top of your flight stick type mm -hmm. thing in the, in the cockpit. So that's like an that interesting idea. point. Um, a lot of that, so, so, so some of that's hardware, mm -hmm. like, yeah. you, like you've mentioned. Uh, there, that, there's some really cool opportunities around that, but a lot of that can just be accomplished uh, 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 smart to, with, with smart game design. So yeah. if you look yeah. at War Thunder, you press forward on the stick, and it's not that the plane just pitches down, the hand on the stick pushes forward. Pushes forward you yeah. see the, you see that, you see everything. All the instruments react, yeah. and that goes to not breaking immersion. And uh, the the, the Gaijin guys have done a great job in in doing that. Mm. Um, the, one of the funnier ones that we've seen is that we had a we had a developer that knew he was going to be using a game controller, modeled the game controller, which was completely unrealistic because you're, he was piloting a space vehicle, <laughs> and whenever you pressed a button, it would map that button oh, and press. You'd actually see yeah, that and you would oh, see that oh, okay. happen. And so, uh, little I mean, that, that that's uh, that's going one step further, but. Yeah. Little details like that to maintain immersion really go a long ways towards uh, towards maintaining it. And then the other so thing I've keep, heard, keeping you in the game. Yeah, rather. and I've heard developers talk about using Connect for actually tracking body movements to try and then like have that be shown in the Gesture game. Gesture tracking well, is really uh, is really interesting. Connect yeah. is a Connect is an interesting technology. Uh, leap motion. I mean, there's lots of folks that have. Uh, ha have ways to uh, to track limbs, and again, that's something that's super interesting. We we love people that are <laughs> experimenting with that. Yeah. Paper Dude VR, for instance, okay. that was an outstanding <laughs> example of not just uh, motion tracking, but uh, hooking up something as simple as a, as a stationary bike or okay. a, a, a trainer rather, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and taking the dyno uh, taking the dyno data from that and feeding into the game. So oh, okay. yeah, it's. Uh, it's wide open. It's not just connect, or it's not just yeah. uh, it's not just uh, specific. To, uh, it's unconventional stuff that's mm. happening too, and that's really exciting. Again, developers, whether they be game developers or just hackers, taking it yeah. and making it their own. And then, obviously, on the software side of things, you might see games particularly developed for Oculus, and we're seeing a few of those coming out now and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, EVR really, was the first one I tried myself. But. Exactly. We really think that those are going to offer the best experiences, and I yeah. think EVR EV, EV now E Valkyrie yeah. uh, really really shows that. Uh, you get a you get you get a team of des, uh, developers that really understands the nuances, or at least is sensitive to that, and is willing to explore and experiment and come up with good ways to solve some pretty challenging problems. 
and you end up with an awesome experience. And so far we're getting uh, some very good ports and uh, there are some folks starting to test the waters and make, make those made for VR experiences. And again, you've tried Eve Valkyrie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not Valkyrie. <laughs> I always get that name mixed up. It's such a great yeah, name, yeah, and I, I start saying EVR. <laughs> but yeah, E Valkyrie. What did you think of it? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, uh, I actually, uh, and no blame to, I wrote an article when I came out saying that mm -hmm. the worst thing I could have done was see that game first at E3 because it sets every, the standard. Everything else afterwards seemed like it was the past. Yeah, it sets, <laughs> it sets a really high bar, and those guys have taken what they've shown at E3 and they just showed something new at Gamescom, and I mean, yeah. they're they're taking that they're taking that and progressing it at a level that uh, that we're really excited to see what they come up yeah, with next year. I yeah. also think it's interesting to see, and likewise War Thunder as well, where it's a larger game. And you're just taking the elements that work with uh, with Oculus and making something out of that. I think that's quite an interesting work. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, th I think the developers at CCP, I mean, said it themselves. It's one thing to take a game. Uh, it's first you have to identify a game mechanic, yeah. but then to build a game around that, to build a narrative around that, to build uh, all the other elements that, that make for a great experience around that. That's that's also even more. That's also challenging. Yeah. So. The guys at Gaijin here have, have a really awesome game in terms of being able to plunk yourself into a World War II fighter plane and engage in these crazy dogfights <laughs> or on a bombing run. It's 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 nuts. I mean, the, these these are such fantastic things that we yeah. would have never been able to experience in real life. But uh, you can play them on a flat monitor. But once you're in VR and actually it's, sitting there in that totally cockpit, well, right? The cockpit thing is different yeah. for me because you can look 360 degrees. You can look behind. Um, you can see who's chasing you. By turning around and exactly. looking, which you've never been enough to do in a plane game before. It's not no, something you've one of ever my been favorite to do. things to do. Uh, one, of my, one of my favorite things about VR is the ability to to feel. You, know, you kind of feel where yeah. incoming fire is coming from. You know, yeah. like so when someone's <laughs> chasing you and you see those bullets whiz by, you're like, oh my gosh, he's right behind me. You know. But also, I found that it's better for when you're trying to uh, come in, swing in behind a plane as well. If you're coming at a plane at an angle and they come across your path. It's much easier to be able to track them with your head and slowly move your plane than trying to move your plane to keep an eye on them so you know yep. where they are. And there's it, there's it, something it, about it changes the way you play the game. Exactly. Um, one of the th one of the things when we first played back then EVR yeah. was we were able like a lot of us we stopped fighting like we we didn't <laughs> we want to go explore and like run through the satellites and yeah. we were able to pull off maneuvers that you generally can't do on a screen because you you have a very you have a very strong sense of uh, of place yeah. and you know exactly where your ship's placed and positioned yeah. so you can do some pretty insane maneuvers and thread the needle whereas we tried it again yeah. without the rift and <laughs> straight into the wall every time. And obviously we're saying that cockpit games are something that's particularly well suited. Surgeon Simulator is the other thing you're showing which is a bit different. Is there, is there any sort of um, uh, software or you know, game genres that you would like to see come to Oculus that you haven't really it's seen yet? It's wide open. Or I is mean, that, there yeah. kind of quite a breadth of things the, coming? The, the, the beauty of being, uh, being an open dev kit is that anybody can take this, anybody yeah. can get their hands on one and again make it their own, start exploring. Cool. Do crazy things like Surgeon Simulator. Do a World War II flight sim. Do a Starfighter sim. I mean, it's yeah. it's uh, we, we we make. No, I always joke. I, I'm not a game developer. I'm not a game okay, designer. Yeah, yeah. And what's really exciting for us is when they take the tech that we've made and really apply their art and come up with games that we don't even know we want to play yet. <laughs> that, that's the fun part. <laughs> okay. Well, I definitely look forward to getting my hands on some more Oculus Rift experiences in the future. Let's do. Thank you very much for your time. I hope it all goes well for you today as well. Thank you. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate it.